All right, now um, I've got a mixed file that I want to take into Logic and cut it up into loops that I can then use in subsequent compositions regardless of tempo uh, and not have it sound distorted or screwed up. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I fire up uh, Logic and I start a new project here. And let's see, just all I need is just one audio track. I'm going to shrink this up a little bit here so I can see what I'm doing. Move this over here. Here's the file I need. I'm just going to drag this over. Ba -boom, ba -boom. Yes, I want it to be 96K. I want the highest possible sample rate. I'm not going to bother with importing this uh, tempo info right now because I'm going to make all new tempo info. Um, I can type the letter Z here to zoom all the way out. Right, now uh, let's see here. The beat in question I'm interested in is I think right here. Yeah, that's the one I want right there. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this. I'm just going to rough cut this. I just want to cut off everything that's not this this beat here. So Command-T to make a slice there. Drag my mark over here. Command-T to make a slice there. And get rid of that and get rid of that. Okay, just this beat. Right, okay. Now, here's what we got to do. We go up here, click on the Smart Tempo Project Settings. And before anything else, go and change this to Beats, and we're going to leave everything else off. It's going to be set to Keep Project Tempo, because we're going to change the Project Tempo a different way. Uh, we're not going to really be concerned with all that right now. Uh, so let's see here. The next thing I'm going to do is double-click on this region here. Here's my region. Z to zoom out. Okay, then click the Smart Tempo tab. And under the edit menu, uh, if it hasn't already been analyzed, uh, analyze it again and give it a few minutes to hum and whistle and think about that. Okay, now that it has done analyzing the tempo, I'm going to type letter G so we can see the global tempo track. And then down here, I'm going to, from the edit menu, I'm going to select apply region tempo to the project tempo. What that means is I've analyzed the performance here and it's figured out the tempo of the performance, I'm going to take that information and I'm going to make the project follow that instead of the other way around. Okay, so when I select this, you get this little dialog box, and it's a good idea to just select everything and say apply. Hey, look at that. Okay, now that the region tempo has been brought in to uh, take the place of the project tempo, uh, let's zoom out some more here. Actually, I'm going to hit return and go all the way back to the beginning here. Right. What I want to do is I want to find one here before I go too much further and get it aligned to the nearest downbeat uh, in the uh, in the timeline here. So I'm actually going to zoom in here. And what I do when I record a beat is I give myself a little uh, kind of a slate here at the beginning. Four. Okay, so that right there is one, okay? That is meant to be a cue to myself, so I'm going to go zoom way in on this sucker. All the way, all the way to the very nub of it, as far as I freaking can go. Right, boom, right there. That is where the pedal hits the metal, and I'm going to do Command-T and slice that right there and get rid of everything before that. Okay, so that is absolutely definitively one boom right there okay now i want to get that lined up with one on the uh timeline here now here's the thing before i start moving things around if i were to leave the smart tempo settings at keep project tempo and move around this region uh oh now this information has become disconnected from the music that's wrong undo uh, so we need to set it to adapt so that that doesn't happen. Now when I move this, everything travels together. So here's here's a real neato, easy trick. Now that I've sliced that that downbeat, now I know definitively where one is. I want it to be uh, I want it to be here on one, definitively one, uh, rock solid. So um, rather than drag it around, I have it selected. All you gotta do is just hit the semicolon key, and it'll just snap right on over there okay so now that is aligned okay the downbeat is aligned now what we need to do is set to adapt tempo now what we need to do is turn on flex and follow 
and we need to pick from this drop down menu here, we need to pick the slicing algorithm that is specifically made for uh, drum parts. Let me zoom out a little bit here. Okay. And uh, let's take a look here. Uh, right. Okay. Let's play this. And now you can see that even though the tempo is slightly shifting up and down because it's being played by a human being, not a machine, uh, it's still in time as far as the metronome is concerned. Right, but if we want to use these for loops, it needs to be really uniform so that it will stretch uniformly regardless of what the tempo of the project is. And so that if you use things like delays that are synchronized to the project tempo that you don't get mush and slap back and stuff like that because you have a much more precise performance. So uh, what we need to do is make the tempo uniform for this entire thing. So what I'm going to do is open up this over here and here's the tempo, the tempo window right here. This shows us everything that's going on in this blue line here. I'm going to do Command A to select all and hold down Command and click the top one there. So I'm deselected the top one and I'm going to delete this. I'm going to change this to, let's set it to 75, which is around about the tempo that I want it to be. And let's see what happens. Two, three, four. Look at that. It's rock solid. And because we're using the slicing algorithm, as I say, it's oriented towards uh, towards drum parts. The other thing you can do is if something is slightly off here, let's see what we can. You can do little spot corrections uh, as, as you need. Okay, so anyway, now to make loops, set the uh, cycle to wherever you want. Okay, so like I might take this region right here. Okay, so that's where my locators are. I have the region selected. It's Control Command T, which means slice it left and right at the points where the locators are, and then Shift Control O, O for loop, I guess, and then uh, give it a name. Uh, I recommend having a naming convention. It doesn't matter what you have for a naming convention as long as you have one. Set the key and the scale to nothing, basically, because these are drum parts. Let's say it's uh, electronic, right? you know, whatever. It's a deep, you know, future bass, right? Drums, beats, single, clean. Pick some categories that apply uh, and click create. And then what happens is it goes into the loop library over here. And like I can search for it. Uh, here's all my FBC loops here. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so anyway, you get the idea. So um, then they become reusable parts of your library for subsequent tunage and uh, without any distortion and all. It, uh, th this is the recipe that works. All right, over now.